Donald Trump never provides policy details. He's really a classic bumper sticker candidate. In fact, if you use the uh, classification that Isaac Berlin uh, used, uh, clearly uh, Donald Trump is what you call a hedgehog. He has just one big idea, and he uses that to essentially always say, I'm the only person who has a solution to all problems. And his big theme is make America great again. One big idea and a very simplistic uh, very explanation. Very simplistic way, and of course. And, and, work with the voters, And he, he says, you know what, I don't need to give the policy details. Just trust me. Look at my business empire and how I've been successful it's over time. It's never been done in exactly. U.S. politics. And this guy this is a reality approach. show star, so he knows how to play into people's fantasies. He, in fact, wrote right. that in The Art of the Deal. Now, when it comes to Hillary Clinton, she's your classic fox. She knows a lot of things about a lot of issues. But the problem is that it's, it seems in today's world of short attention span in today's world of hyper reality when it comes to how people present themselves when it comes to people looking for authenticity rather than experience and sometimes even credibility it seems that actually Donald Trump may have the upper hand which coming sounds into familiar, the debate right? today We're talking about President Duterte who has pretty much uh, risen to power on the same approach of uh, this kind of raw authentic mm. simple yeah. approach to to pro solving the problems of, of, of the nation and foreign policy. Let's go to that now because another big mm. issue I think that we're following today is that statement uh, as uh, cryptic as it sounds yeah. uh, what was it? I'm thinking of cr crossing the Rubicon. I'm crossing the Rubicon mm -hmm. or I'm about to cross the Rubicon. Yeah. I, I forget the actual quote but yeah. it was ref in reference to the trigger speech yeah. of course uh, uh, reference to Julius Caesar um, crossing the Rubicon in relation to Philippine uh, relations, relations with, yes, with the yeah. United States. Yeah. What exactly is that? Well, President Duterte... Because it's just very confusing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on one hand, uh, the U.S.-Philippine uh, military exercises will, 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 will continue. continue yeah. um, it's, like, it's like this, uh, you know, touch and go kind of, yeah. kind, of, uh, kind of statements from him. Yeah, I mean, clearly when it comes to President Duterte, he has a lot of apprehensions about the United States. And for legitimate reasons. I mean, let's be honest, the Philippines has been too subservient to the United States over the e decades. Let's be honest, he's right when he says the U.S. never clarified the extent of their commitment to us under their mutual defense treaty, whether they will come to our assistance if there's a conflict in South China Sea. Let's be honest also, what the U.S. is giving us is, 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 is pales in comparison to what countries like Jordan or Egypt or Pakistan have been getting billions of dollars in terms of foreign military financing cutting edge technology, not to mention Israel. So he's right to say that the United States should give more to us. And a part of me feels that he always dangles the option of China and Russia. Do you think this is a bargaining chip? I mean, is yes. President Duterte just yes. using these statements yes. as a way of getting the attention yeah. of the United States to take him seriously and to take the Philippines seriously yeah. as a partner and not as a former colony? I, I is it just about that? Or yeah. is the President really um, entertaining the possibility of a uh, strategic alliance with Russia, mm. I mean, it, it's just unthinkable at this point. Yeah. Well, the thing China, is this, perhaps, yeah. uh, Japan, perhaps, you know, the, the closeness, uh, the Asian yeah. ties. But Russia, where, did that, where does that yeah. come from? Well, he always puts Russia and China together, kind of like, like an Eastern power. It's like, it's like Cold a throwback war. to the Cold War. Yeah, exactly. It's well, like well, the thing with, with President Duterte is that he clarified that he's actually not talking about military alliance. He's just talking about buying some equipments from or there, assuming the quality is good. And in, fa in fairness to the Russians, sometimes they actually give you good quality with the yeah. developing world okay. price. So in fairness to him. And the other thing is that he clarified he actually wants more trade and investments from these countries, not necessarily military alliance. The but thing to is use Russia, obviously, he's trying to just push some buttons in the U.S. State Department. And he was beside Medvedev during the ASEAN <laughs> summit, so perhaps they had to pick <laughs> up some interesting discussion. Now, the thing with Duterte is this. Uh, he's not Hugo Chavez. You know, this is the criticism is that he's going to be the next Hugo Chavez. He's going to take out the, United, the Philippines out of the U.S. strategic orbit. I think President Duterte realizes how important the America is to the Philippine security establishment, to the AFP, to the DND, and much of the Philippine intelligentsia is also very pro-American. And the Philippines actually had the highest approval rating of U.S. last year in the world, 92%. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So if President Duterte has a 91% approval rating, U.S. has a 92% approval rating. So I think he understands that he cannot go the Hugo Chavez way even if he wanted mm -hmm. and I don't think that's what he wants what's more possible with Mr. Duterte I have been arguing is that we may see what's happening between US and Turkey so under Mr. Erdogan who's also very colorful right, right, kind right. of a strong much strong very man issue. Approach yes to whenever he has disagreements with the US and Europe on issues of human rights and democracy he, dangles something. he always says I'm gonna meet Putin and he literally goes and meets Putin mm -hmm. he literally goes and strikes military agreements and trade but deals of course with Turkey China. is Turkey it's but it's at the end of the day of the Middle East it's yes. a NATO ally. I'm and at the end of the day, <laughs> military to military relations continue. And in fact, Erdogan has been carefully using this kind of a Russia-China card 
to push the Americans to give in concessions on military and political issues. It's very possible that Mr. Duterte will go along those way if the disagreements on issue of human rights and democracy continue. I don't think he's going to abrogate our mutual defense treaty with the U.S. or the enhanced defense cooperation agreement, but expect him to always dangle the Russia-China option whenever the U.S. and other countries pressure him on the human difference rights with, issues. The difference with Erdogan of Turkey, of course, is that Erdogan has uh, has a country behind him on this issue, pretty mm. much. Does Duterte mm. have the Philippines behind him? There's, of course, a nationalist um, yeah. breeze uh, uh, flowing through the country yeah. right now. But pretty much the Filipino elite, uh, the foreign policy elite, yeah. um, the military elite, are still very much pro-U.S. Do you think he has leverage? Can he mm. actually say that and be taken seriously when he says, I'm going to Russia and China? Can he just do that alone? Because he'll have to do yeah. it with the consensus from the basically the establishment. My thing is this, I, I, I foresee the possibility of us having some sort of limited military agreements with Russia in terms of buying some advanced mm -hmm. equipments mm -hmm. from them. It, and it's actually nothing different the way other the ASEAN countries yes, do it. Yes, anyway. everyone has been doing it. And the Russians are actually on a roll here in Southeast Asia. They've been selling armaments around the region. Their economy is in recession. They have to sell mm -hmm. stuff. With respect to China, to be honest, my argument is he has around one year to get something out of China. So he's going to visit China around October 1920 uh, next month. And we can, we can expect some deliverables to be discussed, like a mutual, uh, some sort of non-aggression pact here in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, perhaps he will really cancel uh, joint patrols with the United States as some sort of a confidence building measure because mm. the Chinese are mm. sensitive about mm. that. Maybe it'll slow down in terms of giving American more access mm. to Subic and Clark and Oyster mm. Bay. It's possible we may even discuss a joint fisheries agreement. But I think if the Chinese really don't give him anything, if they take President Duterte for a ride, which is possible, tried, which is highly possible, if they see right through him and yes. think that he's just using China yeah. to get concessions from the U.S., I mean, that could be counterproductive. And the pr argument I'm beginning to hear in China is that this guy is too volatile. We cannot make a deal with him. So they're trying to use it as an excuse not to give him any concession. I think if within one year, President Duterte doesn't get any deal and the Filipino people are very anti-China, while pro-American, it's very much possible that he will go back to the previous strategy. But the only good thing, at, the go good thing there is that at least he tried. He made a temporary tactical shift and he experimented. So let's see. I think it's time for some experimentation. All right, just to close this, just, just to close this conversation, who among the two presidential candidates in the U.S. do you see having a, a much more harmonious relationship with, with, with the Philippines and President Duterte uh, in particular? Well, given how... You think it would be Donald Trump because of his <laughs> isolationist approach and his kind yeah. of like similar uh, kind of uh, persona, machismo and yes. persona. And yeah, strong that. man. But is that necessarily so? I'm sure the world will pay uh, trillions to have to see a selfie between those two leaders, Duterte uh -huh. and Trump, in the White House. I think everyone looks forward to it. But, but to be honest, I think the problem is that you have two persons with kind of mercurial temperament. It's never a good mix. Mm -hmm. It's never a good mix. And the thing is that even if the, uh, even if Trump could go for a much more new isolationist policy, he may take any expertise by Duterte much more personally than President Obama has taken it. And that's Especially not recipe for good relations, right? His voter base would not take that. Exactly. He has this macho base who will not tolerate any kind of insult from some sort of a small developing country. Let's be very honest about that. That's a nativist, nationalistic about him. And he wants America to be great again. So I, I think he'll be much more sensitive. And remember, Donald Trump is a guy who you can taunt on Twitter. Mm. Just say something insulting to him and he's going to come back at you. So I don't see that going away <laughs> if he becomes the president. <laughs> now, with respect to Hillary Clinton, I expect some tensions on issues like human rights and democracy. That's, that's, that's predictable. That's yeah. predictable. But I think she's pragmatist and realist enough to make sure that the relationship and with familiar China with the region. Center. Yes, and extremely familiar with the region. And remember, the last time she was here, she called South China Sea the West Philippine Sea. She knows how to play to the audience here in Asia. She's extremely familiar with Asia. So even if in, uh, in theory, Hillary Clinton seems to have a much more divergent personality or persona as opposed to uh, Trump when it comes to Duterte, I think her policy experience, her familiarity with Asia means that she'll be better able to handle tensions with the Philippines under the Duterte administration. Right. Because relations with the U.S. are entering a new normal and you need a much more uh, experienced and credible leader in the U.S. to deal with that. Right. First things first, either one of them will have to be elected by the, by, by, by the American voters. And of course, we enjoin everyone to tune into ANC uh, starting at 9 o'clock. We'll be carrying the presidential debate between Hillary Clinton of the Democratic Party and Donald Trump of the Republican Party live here on our channel. In the meantime, Richard Hedaren. Thank you so much. It was a great pleasure As to always. talk to you.